Yeah, that's what the they played in game one, but it struggled after, uh, <laughs> of course, we saw the Blitzcrank locked in, which was a little bit crazy. Saw that level two hook change things massively around. This Zaya, though, has, uh, I think the Zaya, has the Zaya won every game today has been played? This is this I think it has, game yeah. The Zaya has been played. I'm pretty sure Zaya has won every single game we've seen, and the dub is going to go back to that Syndra. So, long range backline from IG. Yet again, this is the carry combo which won them their game one, and then not against Jarvan this time. There is still, however, long range engage from the Maokai there. So while it's not a cataclysm which will be able to jump past the front line and dunk the back line, that uh, Nature's Grass can do a very fine job of putting people into a bad position. All right, well, we got that focus for uh, Shadow last time with the Viego. This time, a little bit more of that facilitation with the Maokai back to that duty. The Maokai is still very point uh, on the meta. We saw uh, at least last series as well, but the Renekton really a big point for Invincible at this point. Uh, we will see what the response is from YSKM on the other side. Should Okay, it is the, the Cassante that comes through. We're going into the second phase of bands now with a little bit of a different focus. Yeah, so our fellow officer's lane pairing is going to be taken away. Might see the Nautilus band away as well. The Lulu and the Nautilus are two of the more uh, powerful ones. I don't think this is necessarily the game for the Thresh. Thresh can struggle to reach Syndra and Zyra in team fights, especially if they're stood behind something. Like the Cassante, who can just tank up the hook with his W, go unmovable. In fact, actually, NIP batting away the Nautilus instead. I'm a little surprised by that. I think this is a bit awkward now for them. If they feel like they have to ban away supports when they realistically want to be picking something like the Nautilus for the Rafaelos, that is not a great position to be in. Ooh, the Annie ban there as well. The final part for IG. They will still have their counter pick available, and I'm wondering if they uh, even utilize that. We saw them in game one, they didn't utilize it. They still uh, <laughs> won pretty true. well with the comp they had. We'll see the Blitzcrank as a respect ban given over <laughs> from NIP. What a world we live in when you're banning out Blitzcrank. Ain't it crazy? Uh, so, what are you looking at here from IG? You're lacking a little bit of engage right now. You have the range to play around, but something like that Renata, actually, that was hovered first. I'd actually quite like that. Gives you some backline access, buys you a bit more space. It's disengage and engage. This has been something which Wink has gone back to a number of times, though. That Ash was halvered as well. Been nerfed, of course, in terms of the uh, support itemization compared to, uh, like, the melee compared to the ranged ones, I suppose. Uh, have changed a little bit. But, as you were saying, um, IG not necessarily using their counter pick in that first game, but they are going to use it in this last one. Vi locked into the Marco. Interestingly enough, this is uh, Gideon's first pick of the Vi on the split here. And uh, there's that Thresh hover, at least that you didn't want to necessarily see, and it will be locked in for NIP, so the Aphelios Thresh lane. I think uh, the Nautilus would have been way more preferable because you can't necessarily reach the Syndra and the Zyra in the same way as that Thresh, and the Cassante again kind of makes you a little bit awkward. However, gives uh, your Aphelios a bit more safety to work with against and, that Vial you know, should it flow at you. I, you know, I'm not one to look at too many stats, but... Jwo has a 70% win rate on the Thresh. I, I, you know, results-based analysis is really it's a good. good thing. The thing is, though, like, that, he had a really good set of lanterns in game one. That wasn't the issue. The issue was that it's just very hard to actually get aggressive plays going despite your defensive plays working. And now if you lock into, yeah. like, this Renata with Desire, again, you're going to really struggle to um, go forwards. There's so many things which can separate your team. The fellows on the Thresh mm. are likely going to be lanterning back as the Renekton and the Akali go forwards and it feels like right now IG have great ways to split the team but one thing which I'm worried about for IG is if uh, much like we saw Leanne the other day uh, on Rare Atom just a couple of days ago fly in with a Vi and kind of get two screens away from his team you could be the ones to separate yourselves if you then kind of fly onto a target that gets lanterned backwards so for me the whole uh, way these team fights are going to work out is about how close the front lines to their back lines how separated are these team yeah. fights going to get I really like the opt-in to the solo lane matchups here for NIP, though, especially looking at Shadow. A late season push, add some new pieces and some recurring pieces to the roster and see what happens. If they can solidify, maybe play a little bit of delaying spoiler against IG as we hit the rift between NIP and IG. We'll see who is the last to stand here. Shadow walking up. It's a lot of IG fans. <laughs> Well, they are one of the older orgs in terms of the um, old successful orgs in the LPL. Of course, one of our world championship title bearing rosters. Well, not rosters, orgs in this region. So that tends to buy you a couple of fans. They tend to stick over time. NIP on the other side. 
uh, new org into the LPL despite them taking up the mantle of V5. Still got a little while to go to build up themselves a bit of history. And right now, looking in 3v3 in this top side. Yeah, uh, I actually saw it. I always like to look at the state of players. I, I typically look at the, the cams. Not gonna buy too much into it. Why Gabe would actually start the game with his oh. head and hands there, but Dub getting a nice just, trade in just this to back dream. stepped two of these five point strikes at level one. Got like a load of airy trades, and he gets himself uh, the ward XP from the topside vision. By the way, is the game over later. now? Is the it's over. Well, you know we talk about like the battle flow bad stacks. First off, go, go one of them, good stuff. But also, if you kill a ward at level one and you share the XP between, I think it's three people or less. Um, Dove, um, like, will hit level 2 on the first wave instead of wave 2, which is actually pretty nice, especially uh, it's so like the Akali who struggles to fight a level 1. We'll see if that does make the game-winning decision happen. Uh, we'll see uh, IG going down to this 2v2, though, into the Renata Thresh lane. Be interesting to see how quickly, or if any, there is love from the jungle into this bot lane, but we'll see, actually, if especially where the spotlight is for Gideon and Shadow across from each other. Uh, the thing about this matchup, we've seen this a lot. We know this matchup now is a uh, known variable. Vi is the one that goes aggressive first. Maokai is the one that wants to counter gank. So it is on Shadow to have vision on Gideon. It's on him to be in position to stop Gideon getting early plays. The Maokai himself struggles to go forward first. That's because uh, I'm going to wait until you're level 6 mark until that really happens. So with Gideon playing around pushing mid lane, around a pushing bot lane, a little bit dangerous around IP. Because, of course, that gives aggressive options for Gideon to get into the river, into the enemy jungle. My peep, really want to see if they can get eyes on Gideon for his next peep. Actually, the cold start there for on the bottom side as well. So definitely opting into a bit safer pathing, uh, or at least early game trades in there in, in that bottom 2v2. But that does play to the rest of the solo lanes. And especially when we saw such an influence from Invincible last game in the series. You know why his cam's gonna want a little bit of a show out moment for himself. Uh, just barely missing out, getting a splinter on that one as well, but already at uh, 18, that's three level ups. Pound and a couple of splinters taken from Dream. It's gonna get the 40 splinters. That's when you get your second charge on your Q. That's where you can get a lot of your uh, pretty nasty trades coming through. And then of course, later into the game, Syndra gets more and more burst, more and more evolved abilities. Hot side. We haven't seen the same explosive craziness that we've seen in, well, most of our games today, actually. Think about it. We've had a lot of level twos bot side. We've had some pokes land. Gideon is into the enemy jungles. Drop down some vision. As we said, very important for NIP to be aware of where this guy is on the map. Got push in mid. And actually, with that dream being very low, despite the low mana on dub, I'm not sure they can do much in mid lane. Gideon taking some chicky nuggies from uh, Shadow <laughs> here. Dream taking those heavy, heavy trades in mid lane. Some CS discrepancy there as well. Should be the back coming through TP back to lane. If Shadow can get in here and steal back those chicken nuggies. Oh, close. Uh, get in. Oh, oh, oh the resets. resets. Oh, oh. There, nobody has smite. Nobody has smite. No, oh. has smite. Oh, the miscalculation very briefly. So, um, Shadow's going to get away with a bit of a camp steal onto some top camps of Gideon. So, it's, it's going to be ahead a little bit in farm. And Gideon not able to use their first levels of uh, power to find anything right now. Oh, it doesn't necessarily have to. It's not the same thing as like a Jin Zhao or a uh, Lee Sin that kind of needs to get things working very, very early. Still, I think which IG actually could have got more out of it. And we're really just in a calm state in the early parts here now. I wonder where the dragon priority lies with uh, dragon spawning up first. It is just that cloud dragon. If anybody wants to go ahead and get that one. And as resets do come through from IG, a push comes through and maybe an opportunity for an IP. It looks like a back comes out from Shadow and just call them early games. Yeah, it might be doing a decent enough job of holding up enough uh, vision to get an easy inroads. Mid lane is a little bit worrying. See that? Oh, feels very safe in this mid lane. It's this is the thing about playing something like the Maokai Ooh, into Syndra. Eventually, the Maokai is going to have threat against the Syndra. Um, yeah, I should not say some goal out here. See why Scam may be trying to get that angle there, but can't do it. But also, Gideon hovering yep. over that power on leash mark for Dove. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Dove still has control right now, gets to show up and roam again. Uh, Maokai threatens Syndra late into the game. Definitely not in laning phase, Dove. Iron and Wink also have control of this bot side, despite uh, a little bit down as yet, even as this wave. I'm actually moving oh. in here from mid lane as well. Yeah. 
Not wanting to give over the early Dragon Shadow. We'll make his way down there, just make us uh, sure that one's killed off of. NIP can't take the Dragon themselves. Also, being on blue side, being on Dragon, we saw this a couple of times uh, last few days. Um, if you start a Dragon on blue side, particularly early, you're going to get stuck in the pit because you can't disengage in the same way. Be very careful that you're ending the fight or ending the Dragon very, very quickly. NIP not in a position to do so. YG and NIP both uh, not going to be able to secure that objective. So we're getting first timers from these uh, supports as well. See Wink actually clear. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> the little cheeky, little cheeky stuff from Shadow. Yeah. Just to remove the ward, put it down elsewhere. Shall not have this ward, uh, especially when it's a support who doesn't really get gold for many things. Can be <laughs> just a little bit of a cherry on top. This is a mad dash from NIP here. It is. Yeah, because Shadow was just seen on top side, so they left the bot side river again. I don't know whether they can stop this again. Can you I don't HP, think they though? can. Shadow stopped off in mid lane and stayed there. Now Invincible is getting all outed by YSKM. Does get the knock back, and here you go. Invincible having a flash. YSKM still having it's his flash sick. available. NIP are now here with Bodic points. As now the engage from okay. NIP. Dream, he's going to try to get it. No, that's first blood for on again. As top side, another fight takes place, but power at least. Dream goes down, and you've lost two for one for NIP. But once again, the dragon's just not taken. NIP really don't want to give IG these early dragons if they can help it. They had the early control from Syndra in mid lane. Bot lane as well, despite the push going back and forth, it really has been on the wing getting first move more often than not. So NIP commit an awful lot to trying to kill this dragon. But they've ended up getting punished for it this time. Shadow turns back down to this place. Doesn't have level 6 yet. This is one of the problems with Marakai trying to go aggressive. Like, you use your basic cooldowns like this. The thing about when Vi does this, you have a lot more auto attack damage. You have two charges yeah. of your E. It means that your early burst is a lot better. Gideon sadly not winning the mind game. The timing battle and trying to flash out with the perfect execution part 2. Very quick ability. Very hard to uh, disengage from that one. Does go down despite the bailout. IG will walk away with a couple of kills though. Especially with Dove getting one of them. The Syndra, see how strong they are currently. A little bit worried now for NIP if, as to what happens if Arn and Dove once again get powerful in this game. Gideon was actually just trying to prey out a little bit on somebody with that season assist available for him now. They're pulling out the Rift Herald here. And IG trying to use a bit of this spike. Invincible will show up, show that they're doing it. To be IG's objective though. Oh, Ooh, Shadow. Like six hit though. Nice uh, double hit with the Nature's Grasp. Should still there be IG taking this That's one. That's important. There is, there is, there's a Renata ult, which is very, very important. It's very unfortunate that Maokai ult is typically very strong around First Herald. Um, but it, it, because so many shenanigans happen bot side, the Dragon has taken a minute later than it normally is. Um, and Wink's taken a bit more XP, which means they had level 6. The Renata ult being on table makes things a little untenable. Dragon's still not been taken, by the way. Gideon's getting poked. Can they find Hook on the Gideon. There's a sapling that hits the back line as well. Both 3v3s just kind of duking it out right now. You do have first move at the moment from Photic on the bot side. Dragon's still not taken, as you said, but pressure in the mid lane. It is so. Okay. 1,000 gold behind. Starting up the dragon themselves Round two? now, which I don't know about this. Oh, I'm really not Shadow. sure. Don't oh, have Shadow. Oh, Shadow. He's trying to get to the rest of the team. There's Death Sentence on the dub. Shadow's out with the Dark Passage as the hostile takeover comes through. Photic with the Moonlight Vigil. There goes one kill to Dream. And Photic is firing away with the red white. The sapling hits on Gideon as well. And NIP actually pull it out. That is an absolutely insane lantern for oh, sure. He turned the fight into NFP's favor. YSKM doesn't get the knockback. Yeah, top lane is just kind of trading evenly, just giving the, <laughs> giving the uh, ultimates over. NIP have put so many resources in. Hang on, is this going to be a bad lead? Can this just be straight uh, up kill? I think he might. He's going to try to get the spin, and there you go. Invincible pulls out his own Beyblade. Invincible getting the better over. You should know me in this top lane matchup. Battle of the rookie top lane is. In this series, very much going the way, I think unexpectedly, of Invincible. Good kill on the Renekton. Really impressive stuff from Invincible these last two games. To start this off with the solo polo, but last game being literally the thing that pulled the fights into NIP's favor. Those huge slicing maelstroms on the Kennen. And now having the confidence with that Renekton pick, something he's been comfortable with all season long. 
We'll see that kind of craziness. And the pullback of NIP here, honestly, pretty impressive. Yeah, so big things there. No Maokai ult. I thought that was going to be the difference maker um, for IG. But Shadow cancels out the buy ult by just walking towards them and pressing W. Goes untargetable. See some Zisk can't come through. And then we have to see what happens in this top second. Why scam? Picks up the Sante at champion, which he has added to his champion pool. Definitely not one of his most comfortable picks compared to the Fiora, the Gax, and the other earlier for sure. But showing some proficiency on the ult. Invincible on the Renekton, however. Ends up getting a really nice solo kill. It has been side quest top lane item. It's really been the main focus because we haven't progressed the main story enough to kind of go and pull this side content right now. The kill up that, blowing a teleport from Dove as well and putting Guaya Scan behind will be something which might be informed to track in team fights later. Now we're looking at some vision to play around this uh, bottom side of the map at least. Photic and On still in their own version Cole of an was island. Oh, was just oh, Pokemon on that way, yep. actually. So that's why the observers went down that little gold into their events. Actually, that gold. Actually, wrapping exactly around to here. The most minute oh, of oh, gold advantages. Oh, 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 Gideon oh. doesn't get over the wall. No! I'm not really sure what you could have done at that point, though. I don't think Alan and Wink could have followed up. But uh, get it, shit. Gideon runs Shadow. Human enemy jungle, Shadow has his ult back up and available. Very different fight if Margai has his ult. Oh, dumb. Ready there. Oh, dumb. That's a flash out. Bramble smash. Nice damage from Dream. And that should be a kill going over. Shadow doesn't oh, get traded. Something. Nice heals. And thumbs up from NIP as they punish Dove. Yeah, every time that Maokai is up, you got to be afraid. Sintra, not the easiest champion to survive Maokai once he has his ultimate available. Despite it not necessarily playing out normally like that. Once Moonlight Vigil combo from Zwo, that is huge as well. The setup though, back on a photo. He gets out, but not enough in time. It is a trade back and forth, but it's Zwo who gets the kill. That's not where you go with the gold. That Destin is actually going into the minion. It's huge. <laughs> Dream is here to pressure it off. Yeah, and also it is the Aphelios that dies. So Aphelios doesn't get to farm this wave under turret. We talked about this last game, but Aphelios loves to be ahead of the game. The more damage he does, the more he heals, the harder it is to take him down. It's a very fine balance for champions like Aphelios to get ahead of the game, play out their own win conditions. On the other side, Han, 2-0-1 now, takes three plates. And on bot side, to go back. Cold was already popped, gonna finish himself with bots. What components is he gonna get? It's Warhammer, so on his way to a second item, healthily so. Gold very even between these two teams, all things said and done. But when you look at the gold being on a Renekton, as opposed to the gold being on the Zai, who has won every game today that has yeah. been played, you start to still feel a little bit worried for NIP. No one's really had the Zaya answer in today's LPL games. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, we will see a continuation of those yes, items. Yes, that's the problem right through. there. Officer, officer there we found are. the culprit. <laughs> uh, we're going to have to call this one in. Uh, tempo I, I don't know all the different. The different. <laughs> The different codes. Uh, but maybe one day I'll do the research. Uh, now we see actually IG collapsing around mid lane, bringing a lot of bodies here. It is what literally just going to be four man stacks right now for them because that's where they feel confident in. Well, what we should do is we should call up the LEC and get their interviewer slash host and create a new show which has got a very original title called Law and Order. I think that would be great. Uh, maybe, maybe <laughs> that we would try be great. That, that would be great. Get her on the case, see what she can do I'll around be that here one. For it. Um, going up towards the second dragon spawn though, and I people very hard over the uh, first dragon of the game. Second one, of course, the Hextech Dragon, very good basic stats, and uh, with ultimates coming back up, NIP, no reason to see where they shouldn't start going towards that with three kills on Dream as well. Very much need to talk about that one. Um, he's more than ready to start popping some heads on the side of IG. Trying to deal with this Zaya, maybe the Akali can do it. Got a Rift Herald spawning in less than 10 seconds. Invincible's already made a roam down to mid, but there is a Dragon spawning as well. See where the priorities lie here as NIP have first move. They have first move. They've got saplings around the Dragon. They've got pushing mid. They've got pushing bot as well as Dream uses his individual power to force them out of the river. Dragon That's has That's Dove's looting just completed. Big item completion, but how much can you do with it? Are you actually going to get in range to do damage? And I've been doing a good job of zone control currently. That shock room damage onto the dragon. It's already bringing it down. TP is actually committed, but it's late. It's double TP now. Nature's Grass used the handshake out. Gideon goes back in on the Zwo, but Invincible has completed it. Now the shock room for Photic. He's stacking him up. He does get out. The hostile taker will clip him. Now Invincible's found Dove, and Invincible will take the wing straight off of him. On is not going to survive. Well, why is KM5 one back on the Zwo? He gets shock room to death, and Invincible, the Mighty Croc chops down on his favorite meal. Much better target selection 
and terrain control from NIP in this game. They don't allow uh, the Zaya to stack up further than one direction. They don't allow the Renata ult to run across the entire team. It was actually a very mediocre hostile takeover. Wink didn't have great options, didn't manage to stop Oda from auto -clacking. Gotta go back into this replay. Schwab being the target of engage from Gideon's flash Q feels like a big misplay. Maybe they thought that this was going to be an immediate um, kind of lantern into the play, but Dream does a great damage. Doesn't uh, Dream does enough, brother, to just stop the backline of Han and Dove getting the damage onto the right target. That buys time when they walk back into the choke point for Invincible to use his in, uh, early lead as his connection to really get the damage done. The difference between the work that the backlines could do in this game, very much in favor of NIP, which is not what we've seen against the Zaya for most of today. It has felt like Zaya. Whenever they're left alone in an isolated fight, an isolated part of the fight, they are the ones that wins, but IP, they puzzled it out. And massive, massive shout outs to Invincible. Two games in a row being a gigantic difference maker, this time being literally a gigantic crocodilian. And this man is, has taken a, a rookie split here for NIP that, that has been kind of stunning to some extent. I mean, in these kinds of matches, especially against YSK, who we've seen taking down top tier opponents, had that stumbling, but has come back into his own form. Invincible is just straight up making him look like he's not existed. Yeah, especially with a player of that kind of caliber we have known him to be from the early weeks of the LPL. And just to remind you know, of course, like, as much as IG see themselves at seven wins, they're by no means safe in playoffs. When you have teams at six, which are just outside the playoffs range, you lose a series here to NIP of all teams who, while they are not, again, mathematically eliminated, still not in that pack right now. This is dire warning signs for IG. We expected them to come in as favorites. We expected them to be sweeping this one, putting themselves into much safer harbor. That is not the case today. The dream take down this tier three tower in the side lane there at least and uh will be the second turret of the game going over to nip Vince will try to defend his own in the top side but nothing else left just now and man what a way for nip to kind of establish a lead here almost four thousand gold in the lead for them and bodic about to probably get that second item here but the second item completion is definitely important it's just been also about the it, Executed in team fights, honestly, that's been yes. so impressive for NIP. And it's also been just putting yourself into a position where it's easier for you, right? It's the setup. It's making sure that NIP they arrive at the objective first. Yeah, the first track of the game, he might have overforced it a little bit, gave it, given over a couple. Of, now, when they have a few more items, they've got way more levels to their name as well. Particularly Shadow doing a great job of just getting into an area of the map and denying it from IG, threatening the ult to. Stop Dove and Arn being in the right position to get their damage off. And IP can keep doing that around objectives. Gets the objective, zone out IG. A lot of ways to play out teamfights. Oh, oh well, Dream's going in on the 1v2 and he wants it! The power unleashed is not enough. Nice flash. flash from Dove. There's nothing here for Dream now. He has to flash his own. I see Gideon actually want to chase this one down. Dream not having any cooldowns left, but he won't be able to chase it down. Great flash from Dove, but this is a point of pressure for an IP in the mid lane. That is a sick flash from Dove, but still, this is a losing map play for IG. The Herald was on the other side. That's going to be a power play in the mid lane. There's no engage left for IG to stop them um, from, like, uh, well, to stop NIP from pushing into those turrets. Dove will take this bottom turret. It is an objective bounty that is important to know. Actually, even in the first game of the series, NIP took, like, four or five objective bounties back to back. Put themselves in contention. They never overlook those, but as it stands, IG are really not in a comfortable position as a stand, struggling to defend even their own inner turrets. See back onto the map though, with a dragon spawning up, a soul point available for an IP. See them actually moving down here very quickly, and I think IG just giving this one up, saying, you know, we'll catch you in another five minutes potentially, and they'll just be looking at the other <laughs> side of the map, trying to get some of these bounties up for themselves. One thing to note as well, in one of our earlier games, we were talking about how. It was actually a game for this series. Yes, it was. Uh, we talked about it how Botic had a choice between um, the Bloodthirster and the Infinity Edge. He went for the Infinity Edge because he was going for the Shield Break. Let's crank him plus. Have to play a little bit more riskily and do a bit more damage if you're playing from behind sometimes. This time, he actually pulls the safety to go towards that Bloodthirster. Living in on him. He has that Severum. That Overshield is absolutely nuts. Especially if you run something like Overheal as well alongside it. 
Votic. going to be pretty hard for IG to deal with at this point as compared to the first time we saw this champion in the series. And what a moment it would be for him to really step up here. We have seen a bit of lackluster coming from this guy Ooh. who was a huge carry, and now he might just get another piece of gold in his pocket. And there you go, given to the man of the hour. The man of the conversation right there, Votic for NIP. And now it's Baron potentially on the table if they want to go for it. That felt like a bit of a frustration ultimate from Wing. That was realistically never going to achieve anything. Caught out of position, maybe feeling the heat of the moment, because now they're going to have to deal with this Baron in a 4v5 without one of their big engaged backline access tools in that Renata ult. What can they do? Slow approach to this. There's the Feather Storm Blade Collar combo used. The Scatter Week actually already down. Getting in caught up by Invincible. Invincible, that sapling actually doing a lot of work, and now YS Cam has been separated for the rest of the team. There's a flash it's from Fojik! Oh. And huge damage onto Dove! That's Baron for NIP! That's the old pro AD carry wave wanted to see for a while. Fotix back on the FLS in a much more calm game for it. NIP, they do it as they have done all of this game. They find an area in the back, they deny IG entry, they find a pick, snowball that into a big, big win. Soul point for themselves, Baron for themselves, IG not able to contest them around the map. NIP looking very strong in game three. Baron going down now, more pressure on the map available for them. and. What a come up for NIP, the reverse sweep in their eyes here. And uh, about three minutes for IG to get things under wrap and figure out how they're going to approach this next big fight for that soul. Soul point. Um, again, it's the Chemtech soul. I hate ragging on souls too much. We had years of ragging on poor We have so soul, many of these sadly, today. Sadly, Chemtech is just not good, folks, unless you are Trindamir. It's just not really worth it. Um, so, so now, now you're, you're shilling Trindamir in games, huh? <laughs> a little bit. Well, my boy Abby played it in uh, LEC the other day, so he didn't get a win on that one. But uh, hey, got some love for that champion every so often. In this game, oh. it feels like it. Oh, oh big oh, pick in mid lane. Oh. How the heck did this happen? Pick? All right, well, nothing happened here. We got the directed cam. That's what matters. Look, it's a really cool replay, but that pick in mid lane might just end the game, folks. <laughs> Literally, that's, really that's what I was like, all right, that's, I, that's, I, that's like a game changing play. Gideon is still in the alcove. He is? Oh, Why no. Is he still there? <laughs> understand how we got Gideon, here. I'm so confused. You. Help me, Gideon. Right. You're my only hope. Why are you there? <laughs> we'll see a tier two falling. He has made it back behind friendly lines, but that is a tier two gone <laughs> and now pushing on the in hip tower. Yeah, well, my, my, my brother just knocked on my door. I think he just said Gideon was hanging out in the kitchen. He definitely wasn't on the rift. Where the hell is he <laughs> oh gone? God. Just oh, in the TP wrong behind, place, the wrong TP behind. And now let's have 40 for the flank. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. This is maybe a desperation play. Invincible is still mid lane. They found out two members of NIP, and they take down Votic. A big pick for IG to balance the scales even a tiny bit. That's a big pick to get. It does come, however, after you've already lost most of the control of the map. You have now a minute and 30 until Dragon. You won't have Flash on wire scam for the next big fight. You won't have Teleport on wire scam for the next big fight. Is that going to be a difference maker when it comes around that soul, which to be honest, both these teams probably will still fight for, despite it not being a uh, great objective for NAP to close in terms of closing out the game. But still, IG finding some way to take down the FLS who has evaded them in most of their team. That's a nice little pick out there, and we saw it coming from a long way away, at least we did. That TP from YS Cam, but it's a little bit of breath of life from IG where we yes, said he's trying to get Gideon, as much Gideon as could. possible. <laughs> yes, he, 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 you know, you set it up and they knock him down, I guess, sometimes. 50 seconds, though, for this Dragon Soul for NIP, though. And IG need to find some vision and a little bit of safety before they can even contest the fight. NIP, so much control over this area of the map. That is so much vision. They just How let this go. Answer this. How There's do you enter no this area of the map? Dove is one and five on this Syndra. You can't use Threat of Scatter the Weak to buy yourself space because actually most members on the, on the other side of NIP can just tank it. Okay, Three tank item spike well. on, maybe? <laughs> Perhaps, uh, yes, but then if Arn has to be the one leading the way, you got a problem because he actually can't tank a lot of these saplings right now. So even though it's full tank now, oh, they just lose the damage. Oh, they, they lose themselves lose the dragon. Tower. They lose the in tower. This is a death fight. Well, if not a thousand cuts, definitely a multiple of them still from NIP. Not feeling forced oh, to go towards goodness. the dragon. Dove teleporting towards the spots. I'm trying to brute force their way into river, past the saplings, past the vision. But they're still going to be spotted. seen out. IG, they seem so desperate right now. 
They do, and they realize they need to be here for this contest. We got to see the wraparound, though, because Dream and the rest of NIP are focused over there. Now the Dragon is the focus for IG. Can they take this before they get wrapped around on? Gideon is in the back of the pit. Here comes Dream, but here comes Invincible. The Mighty Croc oh, trying so to drop strong. down yet again, and it will not go to Gideon. Everything falling apart for IG. We'll see that Moonlight Vigil not hit, but Dream makes it out alive, and YSKM is left out the dust. NIP, they're making IG look like chumps here in this series. And it's 16 to six and a final push. One last death knell available for IG. On, can't do it. He can't there we go. And stand. Perfect execution, not available, but the damage is definitely there. And Invincible gets himself a fourth kill. And the mighty jaws of the ninjas in pajamas have clamped down on Invictus Gaming. Punching up the table, giving IG a fall to be worried about coming into the last few series of the LPL Spring regular split. Gideon's just trying something, but there's no damage, there's no There's hope. nothing. Oh man, the dream was once sought by IG, but dream has become their nightmare. And the Akali popping off for the mid laner of NIP, but honestly, it is just in pajamas. They're looking swaggerific at this point. And one last Nexus Tower is there. One kill actually goes back, but Fodic is racking up that KDA. And that'll be three kills going over. And more even to NIP as they take a 2-1 victory over IG. Zaya stands alone on the fountain. Such a powerful champion across the world. And of course, today's games as well in the LPL. But NIP, they actually problem solved their way through that particular champion's issues it has presented them on has had a great set of day wasn't enough in that game three Botic coming alive in the depth of that series in a while since we've seen that level of play from an ad carry we absolutely know like top yeah. tier league of legends especially after that